Phineas and Ferb is one of those childhood shows that really knows how to make itself remembered. Ever since its original debut on April 7th, 1999, it has become a staple of my generation for its wacky characters, purposefully formulaic plot, and hidden references. But few would be able to tell the tale of the real-life neighborhood kids that inspired Dan Povenmire and Jeff Swampy Marsh to create their two main characters. In 1958, Povenmire moved into a little neighborhood called the Trident State Community. After settling in, he would often play with the neighborhood children, but it wasn't until he spotted a rickety wooden structure peeking over a fence near his house that he met the brothers Phineas and Frank Grufenstein two very skilled and imaginative young boys. They were children whose family had migrated from Germany before the outbreak of World War II. They had to bring everything with them from the motherland, including the family's prized pet, a rare breed of beaver-tailed duck who they called Petro. They also had living with them their great-uncle Doifenschmerz, who was rumored to have never truly renounced his Nazi ideology after the war had ended. Their older sister Clarice was always nagging them about their creations, and was even reported as saying she was going to bust them down the curb, a common expression in the Midwest. They were also friends with a foreign exchange student, Baljoto Jeet, who was a bright young man who once thought he could travel to Mars with a portal. But this machine was likely just a figment of his imagination. Their mom made famously good pies, including apple, peach, cinnamon, mince meat, raspberry, blueberry, pumpkin, squash, strawberry, artichoke, chicken pot, lamb, deer, roasted peppers, grilled peppers, and grapes. When Dan Povenmeyer befriended these children, he had the fortune of one day observing the goings-on in their daily life as part of a school project on other cultures. They would start the day with sketching their ideas, which were pretty wacky, like time machines, rockets, roller coasters, and even a can opener. They would go to mom and pop hardware stores asking if they had scrap parts to which they would often get the remark, aren't you a little out of your age range for these endeavors? To which they would reply, perhaps. Povenmire kept detailed notes. Then they would build their inventions and sometimes they would work, but most of the time they did not. So they used their imagineering. Children in the 50s, as you probably already know, ingested a lot more lead and uranium paint, so their imaginations were a lot more active than kids today. But their ideas eventually got them into some very prestigious high schools, such as the Walchen Institute for Gifted Boys and Girls and Martin Poggers High. One day, Walt Disney even got involved when the boys entered and won a competition commissioning them to design a section of their next theme park, which would have been called the Giant Atomic Dwarf. But to everyone's disappointment, it was scrapped for Dumbo's flight, designed by their rivals, the Wingnut Brothers. In retaliation, they started to develop rockets based on their great uncle's old blueprints for something called V2 rockets. Huh, kinda sounds like V8 to me, huh? And now, a word from our sponsor. V8 is announcing a subscription service for their vegetable juice. Apply now with the promo code FALLACIOUSFERB and you can get a free shipment of 20 identical cans of V8 delivered to your door at absolutely no cost. V8 is my absolute favorite drink and I am totally in love with pouring it down my throat every moonrise. Now some people say that once they subscribe to V8, they can't unsubscribe and their credit card gets charged relentlessly for products that never even arrive. To that, I say phooey. Just go onto their website and type in the cancellation code 189-472-895-793-487-095-9-2-365-7285 and answer this logic quiz with 99.2% accuracy and you will be free from our grasp, I mean service. Don't be late, drink V8. Now back to the video. The problem is the Department of Child Genius Correction got a little ticked off at the brothers' experiments. So they showed up at their house to arrest them, but the great uncle had a trick up his sleeve, also known as the Snap Your Neckinator, which snapped their necks. The US was already busy in Korea, so they eventually backed off. Pretty cool, huh? Children in the 50s, as you probably already know, ingested a lot more lead and uranium paint, so their imaginations were a lot more active than kids today. Even though the US government was busy, they still wanted to keep an eye on these troublemakers, so they implemented a new animal intelligence program and hired Petro to spy on their great uncle. Pretty wacky, huh? 
After this, a few years passed, and Dave Povenmire met up with his old-time friend and animator Jeff Marsh, who, fun fact, is one of the creators of Phineas and Ferb. He loved the idea of two kids doing really boring things, but then he realized they could actually do exciting things, and he loved it even more. After a few drafts and consultations with the Oracle, Phineas and Ferb was eventually made into a hit crime drama. But what does the show say about late-stage capitalism? A lot, actually. According to Marxist theory, the kids are using their labor for their own means of production, which is just. While Doofenshmirtz represents the proletariat, also known as Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated, which is fundamentally unjust. This makes the show deeply connected to our capitalist hellscape, a broken society which keeps forcing me to buy expensive homes and cars. Thinking about the way Joe Biden refuses to cure cancer scares the emojis out of me. When the real-life family saw the show, they were deeply insulted by their inaccurate and insulting portrayal, and left the country, never to be seen again. Children in the 50s, as you probably already know, ingested a lot more lead and uranium paint, so their imaginations were a lot more active than kids today. Hard to believe that such a wacky but beloved TV show came from the story of a real-life family. Chicken pot, lamb, deer, roasted peppers... <laughs> <laughs> Ro <laughs> Ro <laughs> roasted peppers and fucking grilled peppers. Okay, okay, okay. Roasted peppers, grilled peppers, and grapes. <laughs> also known as the snap your neckinator, which snapped their necks. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> 